Good morning. Good morning to my sisters and my brothers in Christ. Y'all, today, but it's going to be a good day in the name of Jesus. So that's how we're going to do it. And um, I want to say thank all my subscribers. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Um, Let's praise God and give him all the praise and the glory on this beautiful day. So let's bow our heads. Father God in heaven, we come to you today in the name of Jesus. Lord, I love you. I thank you. I praise you. I worship you. Lord, it's nothing in this world that I can do without you. I need you, Lord. I really, really do. I can't do this without you, Lord. I ask that you guide me and lead me by your Holy Spirit today, Lord, and each and every day. Lord, also do the same thing for my viewers, Lord. They need you as well, Lord. Lord, I'm an intercessor. So, Lord, I intercede for them as well, for those that cannot pray for themselves. Lord, here I am. I'm here to pray for for them, Lord. Lord, and I thank you so much for answering my prayers, Father God. Be it unto me and them according to your word, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, y'all. So today's message is, let me pull up my notes. Um, We're talking about God is a, del a deliverer. God is a deliverer. And he gave me three scriptures. The first one is Daniel chapter 3, verse 17. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. Okay. Now, Hosea chapter 11, verse 8. How can I give you up, O Ephraim? How can I hand you over, O Israel? How can I make you like Emma? How can I treat you like Zebul? My heart recall, recalls within me. My compassion grows warm and tender, which means he don't want to do us like that. He loves us. Romans chapter 7, verse 24. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? God will. God will deliver us through Jesus Christ. Okay, now this is for my next one. I got to do another one. Well, you know what? He's the deliverer and the healer. Let's combine them together and keep it going. Um, he said he wants you to also know that he's the healer as well. He said, if my people, this is Luke. Oh, Lord, where I put it at? Okay, I'm just going to read it. It coming to me, but I know it's Luke. If my people, which... Luke 17, verse 14. Mm, no, I might push it. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and, 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 hold on, will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will hear their land? Oh, amen. That was Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles. Um, chapter 7, verse 14. Thank you, Lord. Um, Psalm 6, chapter 2. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am weak, O Lord. Heal me, for my bones are vexed. Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse 14. Heal me, O Lord, and shall, and shall be healed. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for thou art my praise. Amen. The, okay, this is the last one. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set a liberty, okay, to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Oh, amen. That was for me, I feel like particularly because I sometimes I'm, I struggle with my role because I haven't quite, you know, made it. I have not arrived, none of us have. But on this YouTube platform, it's hard. Because I'm not saying what the average prophet would say or prophetess would say. So therefore, I don't think I'm liked or, you know, um, taken in uh, like everybody else. But I can only give it to you as God gives it to me. I can't make nothing up just to please people. And I would never make anything up to you guys just to please you. I have to stick with the word of God. But to say that, to say this, God wants us to know, all of us to know that he is the deliverer and he is the healer. He wants us to know that anything that you need deliverance from, if you bring it to him, he will deliver you from it, from drinking, from smoking, from fornicating, um, from just like adulterous ways, from, um, you know, like um, 
being seductive, being a um a harlot, you know, uh for some of you that like to you know, have sex with older men, for some of the men that like to have sex with women, you know, gigolo. You know, anything that you come to him for come to him for, he can deliver you. But this is the catch. People don't like to confess what it is that they do. Because some of you want to hold on to it. That you don't really necessarily want to let go that side of you. But I'm going to let you know this. Coming into Christ and when you want to be a follower, not a fan, but a follower of Jesus, when something come up against you, take for example me, I had a lustful, seductive, Jezebel, <laughs> harlot type of spirit. And I still want to jazz it up. I still like my nails done. I still, you know, like my little makeup, but I try to do it modest. I used to like, you know, blush and red hair, blue hair, different little stuff. You know, I had, I still had my nose ring, but I had it on a different way. It's a way to do things, but do it in a modest way. You know, a lot of people don't want to follow Jesus because they feel like I got to let go of everything. What you do, you got to give up yourself. You know, to follow Jesus, you're no longer yourself. Like, I love Taisha, but Taisha is gone now. Now I am a follower of Jesus. I'm his servant. I'm a friend of Jesus. Whatever he asked me to do, I have to do. I don't have a choice. So um, if I come on here and I tell y'all stuff and it's directly from the Bible, that's all I can say. That's what I was called to do. I was not called to come in here and say, um, you're gonna you gonna get married. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna and what you some of you are if that's what his will is, but some of you are, are, are not meant to be married. Some of you are meant to be single. You know, sorry. But some of you that don't want a marriage or whatever don't really want that, you're meant to be single and you know who you are. But God created us to be married and have husbands and wives. That's what he would like because he feel like two is better than one. But some of you may not want to be, and it's okay. It's not that you're cursed because you are single. Some of you are, it's okay for you to be by yourself. That's fine. But you just can't be out. You can't be by yourself to be whoring. Because that's, then you out of left field. The whole thing of it is, y'all, it's a standard. It's a code and it's a conduct to this, to this, I'm going to say religious thing because to, to following Jesus is a code and it's a conduct. And he have a certain way that he wants us to be. And you cannot just do what you think that you're going to do and still just say, oh, by grace and mercy. And I found out that when I was saying about grace and mercy, I was crucified so bad really by my mom, about saying that it ain't that much grace and mercy in the world. And guess what? I was right. It is not. You know, somebody has led y'all to feel like I can do whatever I want, but as long as I believe in God through grace and mercy, I am saved and I will go to heaven. That's a lie from the pits of hell. You know, it's 144,000 people that are going to walk with the lamb and that are going to be his bride, groom, you know, be the bride. So therefore, with that being said, you're not going to be able to just live your life how you want it and still go to heaven. Now, if you don't want to um, really go to heaven, then by all means, do whatever it is that you want to do. But the, this path is narrow. And um, it's a narrow, straight path. It's not, you know, you ain't going to be able to do a little bit of this, do a little bit of that. It's like you either all the way in or you all the way out. And that's just all it is to it. Like, I'm sorry, even with me. Yeah, I think about this. I was the biggest weed smoker. I go around people and they be smoking some of the finest weed. And I, you know, I'm just being honest. And I just, I don't hit it because I'm real serious about God. And when I learn, like, if y'all really take this stuff to heart and I tell y'all and really implement it in your life for real, that's when you're serious about Jesus and you really want to go to heaven. You know, anybody can just hear me and just say, oh, okay, I heard her. But until you actually want to do what I'm telling you that God wants you to do, then it, it just talk. You know, and I'm just going to be honest, like, you know, I, I'm for the people that's really serious. If you're not serious, then that's fine. By all means, keep doing whatever you've been doing and you're going to see that it's going to be disaster after disaster after disaster. If God is calling you, you're going to come up out of it, but you're going to go through something till you come out of it to the point where you just feel like you can't take it no more. I'm going to go ahead on and let you know, but I'm trying to give it to you the easy way. Go ahead on and submit, do like I did. Like you said, he calling, pick up the phone, answer the call. But you know, I'm preaching now because it's like when I had it, this moment to give it to y'all and I know that you, some of you are watching if I don't have them, but a few people that really watch it, watch it, get it. It's not me. You got to understand this, y'all. I used to smoke weed just not too long ago. I was turning up with my cousin going over her house and I love her. I love all my family. But if anybody is going to jeopardize me and put me in a state where I'm going to not do what God want me to do, I had to cut them out. I had to just kind of, you know, 
and it's okay. You know, he don't mind you. If it's somebody going to gonna come around you and going to take you off of what he wants you to have, it's okay for you to cut anybody off of Jesus. Like, it, it, you got to understand this. He says, you got to count the um, count the cost. What are you willing to give up? I gave up myself. I gave up any of my family, my own brother, a come to my house, and now he has to respect me. And I was the most cool, down-to-earth sister that you ever want to see. But if I say don't smoke in my house, don't smoke in my house. If I say don't uh, bring no girls in my house, I'm letting you spend the night. I let you come. Don't bring no girls in my house. And it's just what it is. You know, my house is not a whore house. This is a home. This is a house of the living God that he allowed me to live in. He dwells in that. So I'm real serious about it. And some people, maybe some people ain't going to be. Some people just ain't going to get it. And I get that when I found out the number that was going to heaven, I said, oh, okay. You know, I get it. A lot of people just ain't going to get it. So at some point, it don't matter about who views my video. I learned this too. It don't matter who views my videos right now. My videos are for anybody to come throughout life. They're going to always be here. I'm going to always keep on making them forever until God called me to stop making them. So it doesn't matter. At some point, it's going to reach the audience and the person that it needs to reach. And I, I, I know that, you know, God won't have me doing this for nothing. Like, not for real, not me. You know, with all the complexes that I have by myself, no. But to say this, say that. Confess those sins so God can deliver you from them. God wants to heal you. He don't want you to be broken hearted. He don't want you to be worried about any kind of molestation, any hurt, anything that an ex-boyfriend did um, that beat you up, used you, and then went and married the next person. You know what I'm saying? Made you feel like you devoted all kind of time to him and then or her. And then the moment that you built them up, they gone. And the, whatever that you think that you deserve, they didn't gave it to them. So he's the healer of broken heart. He wanted me and you like he's there for you. He can meet you wherever you at, y'all. Like, I'm not lying. You know, I was a person that a lot of people hurt my feelings throughout a young girl growing up. And I just really wanted love and approval from, like, all of my older cousins, my uncles, my grandmom. I just wanted, like, the approval I wanted to make everybody proud. And people don't know that about me, but I always felt, like, less than, you know, I would be with my particular, my grandmother. I'm going to be honest. And she would sometimes live all my other cousins but me. If it was one of my cousins, well, Lisa, her boyfriend take good care of her. And what you call, oh, yeah, she showed her. She got a beautiful shape. So I was just like, dang, like I'm sitting up under somebody helping them. And they really kind of dogging me. You know what I'm saying? But I sat there. I took it and here and I'm here. It made me a beautiful person in God. And now I'm able to, like, I forgive everybody. But you get to a point where, you know, until the hurt let go, you kind of don't want to deal with people. And like I said, you know, I would never offend anybody. But I'm to a place that if, I can't really take it anymore. So if you come to me and God has told me that I can be myself. He said, if they come to you and they offend you, don't you let nobody offend you and hurt your feelings. If you want, he said, you don't got to defend yourself, but you can stop them and say, hey, you know, we're not going to do that. I'm not going to allow you to do me that way. You know, I don't deserve that. And I have a right to tell the person that's coming to me. If you come to me in a positive way, well, you have prayed and seek God before you say anything to me and ask for him to speak the words through your mouth. I'm all open. But when you just come and saying something from your heart, I have really discerning ears and I hear where it come from. So I can hear the hate. I can hear the envy. I can hear the jealousy. I can hear whatever you feel in your heart. I can hear. You don't fool me. So I tell people, watch what you say to me. If you're going to be coming from a negative place, stay back from me. Just let me go out here on this Jesus thing. If I'm crazy, let me be crazy, crazy about Jesus by myself. You know, leave me alone. You don't have to view how crazy I am about Jesus. You don't have to view if I got it all together. Don't worry about me. But see, you know, just do you. You know, that's how I try to tell people. Because, like, this is my walk. I'm going to live it. And I, ask, I, I, I hope and pray that you guys want to walk with Jesus and not just be fans. Like, that's the problem. A lot of y'all just fans. You sit back, you watch the miracles that he do, and you want to be a part of that. But you don't want to give up your life to actually have it for yourself. You want to be a part of it, but you don't want to give up your life to have it for yourself. Anything that God is, if I'm preaching the gospel, you don't think that you can get in the Bible and read some stuff and read the scriptures and the scriptures come alive to you. You know, God has done more for me. Oh, Lord, since I've done this for him than I've seen in my whole life. You know, I had, I'm going to be honest. I like to share my story. Y'all let you know how good God is. But he said, tell them. I was waiting for unemployment for the longest. When they did release the unemployment to me, y'all. I had, I'm going to say the number, $9,616. And I was waiting for that. 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 I was wai
and back up unemployment that I just felt like I wasn't going to get. I had been filing for it for months, four months, and they never gave it to me because I'm going to tell the truth. And these people released $9,616 to me through God. Through God. And the whole time, I'm going to tell y'all this too. I was saying, Lord, if it's your will for me to have it, Lord, give it to me. If it's your will, Lord, please, you know, because you know I need it, Lord. I feel like I'm drowning. I feel like I'm losing everything. I'm probably going to lose my car. My life's going to get cut off, you know. So I'm just sitting up there pleading. Then God said, hold on. You don't got to do all that. I've already done everything that I'm going to do for you. He said, the money is yours. Because he kept putting it in me, keep filing the crime. Because I had stopped. I said, if it was for me to have, I would have been had by now. I give up. You know, I ain't even worried about it. I had just let it go. I said, keep going. Keep going. No matter what it looks like, keep going. And then I'm real big on threes. And everything I had tried, the PPP loan, I had tried the SBA loan, for the, and I got both of those loans. So I said, well, if if I got those two loans, I said, God going to give me the unemployment. I said, I just know that he is. So I tell you this, y'all. With the, he told me, he said, you have authority and power that I have given to you to speak over your own. So he said, I already did it for you. He said, you don't got to be in luck. He said, you call it for it. So what I did was I said, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I said, I as I command my unemployment to be released for the people that's working on it to release my unemployment to me, Lord. You said it is mine and I shall have it. And I promise you, when I start speaking like that, file my claim Sunday, Tuesday, Tuesday night, my money was posted. All the money that these people had owed me and I didn't even know. And then God is so good that morning before it was released to me, I had the number 8347. And I said, oh, they're going to give me 8347. And then let me tell you, he's so good. <laughs> the 8347 was what I had for myself. What he gave me over was for me to sow into other people. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I did. Every person that he told me to sow into, I did it. I did it. And it may have been over a thousand dollars, may have been almost close to two thousand dollars. I really ended up giving away and doing, but I did it. I was obedient. So I know another thing that he did to me, he told me to tell y'all this. It's more to come. It's more to come. So for those of you who have been sowing, for those of you who have been giving away things to people who you have been donating clothes, giving away things, you've been giving them giving things away so you can get things back. New things, new things are coming your way. You're gonna have you're gonna be healed from whatever it was that you have that you are um you're dealing with. You're delivered right now in the name of Jesus from that smoking, that drinking, that fornicating. You are delivered. You're healed in your body. Some of you that are um vexed in your spirit, you're gonna you're you're healed. You know what I'm saying? You're going to be healed. You're healed in the name of Jesus. You know what I'm saying? Just as sure as you receive it, your healing is here. I'm coming here to speak deliverance and healing for all the, for all the God through God to you, to you. Anybody that has an ear to hear and eyes to see, I speak a deliverance over your life. I speak healings over your life. Anything that's holding you back, you are, you're no longer in bondage. God told me, thank you, Jesus. Walk in your authority. Speak healing over them. You know, it's certain things that I've been doing that I have not been doing as I should, but it's time for me to be who God has called me to be. Thank you, Lord. You know, I was doing a message on deliverance and healing on what he could do, but he said, speak it over them. Let them know that they are delivered and they are healed from whatever it is that you have going on. You are healed. Even your broken heart is mended. You no longer will have a broken heart anymore. Your heart is, is mended in the name of Jesus. Right now, some people who heart, your heart is broken. You know, you feel less than, you feel like, thank you, Lord. You feel like everything that you, that, 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 that's that been done to you, you were taking it within you and you held on to it. You release from feeling like that. You no longer have to feel like that no more. You release from um, aching in your knees, aching in your body, aching in your back. You know, migraines and headaches, um, bleeding. Some of you women having bleeding, just, just unnecessary, unnecessary bleeding. Well, you're just bleeding longer than your you know, normal menstrual cycle. Bleeding, you know, just too much, you know, uh, ovaries and uh, cysts on your ovaries. You know, you're free from that in the name of Jesus. You know, who the sun said free breast cancer. You're free from breast cancer in the name of Jesus right now, Father God. You are healed, Father God. You are delivered in Jesus' name. Everybody that watches my video, Father God, I, I just ask right now, Father God, that they are healed and they are delivered in the name of Jesus. He said, go ahead and pray for them. It, that they are healed and delivered in the name of Jesus. No weapon formed against them shall prosper, Lord.
No weapon fought against it shall prosper, Father God. I just release it right now, Father God. Healing and deliverance right now, Father God, through you, Father God. Through you all that it receive, Father God. That they have it no more, Father God, where they have to be dealing with all the things that they've been dealing with in their minds. Some of you have... um. Bipolar, schizophrenic, Father God, you're paranoid all the time, anxiety, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke any kind of anxiety that come upon you, you get pits in your stomach, you get so nervous, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I release, Father God, your anointing through through me, Father God, to them in the name of Jesus, no weapon formed against them shall prosper no more, Father God, who the Son said free is free indeed in the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, no more. No more. It is done. I didn't even know that's what we were doing, but I guess he's he's teaching me things and he's teaching me how to release things over you all. So I ask that, you know, as you go on through your day that you're, you're healed and you're filled with the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit comes in and the well within you because we got to get some of you may not want it, but you know what? I'm a fisherman. So some of you going to get it. You're going to get it. If you came here and you received this message and you received Jesus through this video, you're going to get it. I'm, you know, I'm going to, I'm, you right. Thank you, Lord. He was showing me fishes all in the clouds, Lord. You want me to walk more in this thing. You know, I keep on asking for some people if they want it, but you know what? They want it. They want it. I release it upon them. I release the anointing right now through supernatural power, Father God, that everybody that watches this, Father God, that they are anointed. They are filled with your Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus, Father God. Some of them will speak in tongue in the name of Jesus. Some of them will speak in tongue to glorify you, Father God, to edify you in Jesus' name, Lord. Lord, you called me to do a new, you're doing a new thing in me, Father God. And you want me to step out and step into the call that you have for me in the name of Jesus. So, Father God, I release it upon them. Them. No weapon falling against me, no weapon falling against them shall prosper, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. I was wondering where he was going with that. He said, No, oh, he said, Child, my beloved, not only do you teach them what I'm telling you, but you go ahead on and you speak it and you bring forth, you call in my lost sheep because you're lost, but now you're found. Now God is your shepherd. God is your shepherd now. Jesus is your shepherd. You will be led by the living Christ, the living God. He will lead you. No more will you be led astray from that false prophet and that false pastor that has told you things that are not of him, that are not of God. You're going to now hear from God yourself in the name of Jesus. And we're going to come here. We're going to collaborate with each other. It ain't going to be me telling you what to do. Now you are set free in the name of Jesus. You're going to be able to make disciples. The apostleship is over your life in the name of Jesus, Lord. I didn't know what you were calling me to do, but Lord, you called me to come and speak it. You called me to come and speak it and save your Savior, the souls. You want me to save the souls, so Father God, right now, each and every one of them, they are saved. They will no longer walk or talk the same way in the name of Jesus. Father God, they're going to be filled with your spirit. It is released, Father God. You say your words can't come back void. This is what you called me to do. So if this is what you called me to do, Father God, I'm doing it. No more. No more, Lord. No more. It's time for me to get, it's time to get supernatural. It's time for miracles, Father God, in the name of Jesus. I release them on their lives, Father God. In three days, Father God, in three days, they will come back, Father God, in the name of Jesus and say hallelujah or amen that God did it, Father God, that he done it for them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, Whew, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, my viewers. Thank you, my sisters, my brothers in Christ. I hope that you feel the burning of the Lord within your bodies, within your spirit, and know that God is with you. He is not going to leave you nor forsake you. It's time for me to go a different way with this calling. You know, I have been teaching, but it's time for me to go ahead on and prophesy some things to you. It's time for me to deliver you from some things, to heal you from some things through God and how he is using me as a vessel. No more those dead prayers and those uh, commercial prayers. No more. God just gave me the revelation of who I was myself. So I thank y'all so much for listening to me. I thank y'all for coming. And just hearing what does said the Lord. I thank y'all for accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior because I know that you did. I know that the Spirit is in you now. You're walking in the anointing. And if there's anything that you just want to talk to me about, my email is something for my peeps at gmail.com. It's always going to be in the, in the description. And if you're ever led to sow a seed into my ministry, 
feel free to. Whatever that you give is only to edify the kingdom. Um, it's only I want to do shirts. I would like to have shirts made to pass out to the homeless. I look. My main goal right now is feeding the homeless and getting them clothed for the winter. So if you want to sow a seed to do anything as far as um me buying them um. Uh, maybe some jackets and some warm pants and some mittens. Just getting them prepared for the winter. That's my thing. My thing is the homeless. So in my ministry, I love to love on the homeless. Um, I like to just do anything I can do for them. They need masks. Uh, they need little toothbrushes and, um, they need, uh, I don't have a P.O. box right now to send things to, but I will start, uh, getting, I will look into getting a P.O. box and you can, some, some of you that may not, may not like to do money, you can do, um, gift cards or you can do, um, you can actually send maybe some jackets or some, uh, mittens or, um, some things for the homeless. My ministry is all about edifying, uh, God, the temple, you know, the temple of God, you know, and just, uh, the church, building up the church and the homeless. I cannot stand to see them hungry and don't have on enough clothes and, you know, things that they need or something. So at some point, I'm going to open up a house for them and help them get their life back on track through Jesus Christ. So that's what I'm really all about. So when you, um, want to do anything with me, it's not for me to get my nails done, my hair done. I know you might probably invest in me, probably a cute blouse to wear when I do my video, you know, <laughs> or something like that. But it's mainly for those homeless people that are here in my city because that's where I'm at, you know, and so I can only do what I can do where I'm at. But I love you guys and, um, just be led by the spirit, man. My sisters and brothers, you know, I'm going to say man because I'm, 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 I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm many things, you know what I'm saying? I'm a, a, a woman that's transforming and I'm doing what God called me to do. And a uh, shout out to my cousin, Kanisha. I seen her say thank you on one of my messages. So shout out to my cousin, Kanisha. Kanisha Williams, I love you and you are welcome, girl. And you have a blessed one. And uh, to all my subscribers, uh, I don't want to mess up your name, but um, I'll shout you out on my next video. But you know who you are. Your husband is Eric. So shout out to you. Be blessed by the best, y'all. And shout out to my Uncle Marvin. Shout out to you, Marvin. Y'all stay blessed. Bye-bye.